Hey guys, this is a great day today because I'm going to be talking to you guys about a case of a 14-year-old PANDAS patient, which I'm uh, doing a case study on. She had a remarkable recovery, and I thought I would give you guys a quick overview of what we did. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about basal ganglia encephalitis and immune-related encephalitis, and how these conditions will affect motor uh, control, cognitive functions, and emotional and behavior. PANDAS disease stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disease Associated to Strep. And PANS is Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Syndrome. You can have both PANS and PANDAS on one given patient at one time or separately, and these are immune-related encephalitic conditions which can affect adults and children. There are main similarities between both of them, for instance, OCD, anxiety, emotional disbalance, cognitive regression, and psychotic disorders are some of the similar similarities between the both uh, PANS and PANDAS. There are some differences, for instance, in PANS you'll see more restricted food intake and with PANDAS you can see more tick disorders, vocal or motor, and a history of sore throats in their medical backgrounds. The research study that I'm developing is about a patient who I saw back when she was 10 years old. I saw her for Lyme and Bartonella. She was treated and she's in remission from Lyme and Bartonella. She was in a trip to New York City and she was exposed to mold and she's now 14 years old and she developed uh, symptoms after this exposure. When I first saw her, uh, she was having, well, when I saw her again when at age 14, she was having restricted food intake. She was having hallucinations, intrusive thoughts, psychotic outbreaks. She was bursting in rage attacks, crying, not sleeping, uh, screaming at night and uh, was, was, was having oppositional behavior. She was nonverbal. She wasn't able to draw or write properly, and she was escaping out of her house. That's uh, some of the first things that we started noticing, and as time passed, things were getting worse. I decided to give her prophylactic treatment for Lyme and Bartonella because sometimes the reactive, it, sometimes mold can produce inflammation and can reactivate these infections, and I just wanted to make sure that we weren't dealing with them so that we can push forward and, and improve her with the, any of the other findings that we would have. And we did start with that. Then strep testing was negative. The symptoms would improve when she was on uh, penicillin and azithromycin. So we decided to do a Cunningham panel. And in the Cunningham panel, we saw some uh, abnormalities, which, will, uh, which I will discuss. Then there was also uh, the ongoing neuropsychiatric symptoms, even though we've, we were giving her antibiotics, she was still producing uh, psychiatric symptoms and there were enlarged tonsils. So we decided to then assess the rest of the family and everybody had them. The uh, sister had enlarged tonsils, her um, brother had enlarged tonsils, her father, and her mom who had her tonsils removed as a kid, she had an enlarged, um, well not enlarged, she had red and swollen uh, throat and were, they were all having just uh, symptoms of some kind of flu and sore throat. So we decided to put all of them on acetromycin until we figured out what was going on. The decision was made to remove the patient's tonsils because they were too uh, already too enlarged and she wasn't completely responding to therapy. After the tonsillectomy was done, we expected to see some uh, increase of symptoms because every patient that goes on, under a uh, small surgery or, or medium or large invasive surgery, they will produce what is known as metabolic response to trauma. And metabolic response to trauma produces inflammatory cytokines, which will produce symptoms in anybody regardless of their diagnosis. In this case, the patient had PANDAS, so the symptoms that were increased were related to autoimmune encephalitis, so neuropsychiatric motor and behavioral problems occurred. Although we did pre-medicate her because we were counting on that happening, so the symptoms were not that bad, even though they did happen for at least two or three weeks. The uh, tonsils, once they were removed, they were tested and uh, strep was found as well as actinomyces bacteria. And is worth to note that actinomyces bacteria can also be found in the central nervous system, although rarely, and it can produce muscle weakness, numbness of the limbs and tremors. Also interesting to note that actinomyces bacteria can also produce uh, infarction zones around the basal ganglia in some of the publications that I was able to um, see and find. 
This patient uh, was tested with the Cunningham panel, and it is a ELISA test that re that reviews autoantibodies against certain things, proteins, enzymes, and uh, neurotransmitter and neurotransmitter receptors within the brain, and I'm gonna break it down for you guys. Lysogangliocytes is one of the first things tested, and the Cunningham panel, this is a complex lipid that is present in the membranes of nerve cells and is necessary for vital function of the neurons. And in her case, it was almost normal. The dopamine receptors were abnormal in this case, which uh, they interact with neuro neuron neurotransmitters and they are used for cognition and motor skills. Tubulin was also out of normal, which is a protein in the brain that is required to uh, use to be used for neurological functions. So when disrupted, this leads to motor and behavioral problems as well. Camkinase 2 is an enzyme which regulates neurotransmitter uh, level like dopamine and affecting it will cause neuropsychiatric and motor behavior as well. This wasn't affected in this case. And I use the Cunningham panel because it gives me the confirmation I'm looking for whenever I have a clinical patient that I'm diagnosing with PANDAS, at least clinically. And especially because the strep uh, testing that we did, like the swabs were testing negative, and it wasn't until we took out the tonsils that we actually said that there was strep. So doing the Cunningham panel may be a non-invasive way of determining if you want to go forward with the PANDAS treatment when suspecting of autoimmune encephalitis. The the current state of the patient is remarkably improved, as I mentioned initially. The patient is no longer psychotic. The patient is not having crying, screaming, angry, irritable, or OCD attacks. She's actually very stable and her mood is very gentle. She's sweet, compliant, she's verbal now. She's talking, engaging in conversations, going to the bathroom by herself, writing and drawing within the margins, which is fantastic. We're very pleased to see the results of these type of, pa of patients. And this has been five months after the treatment was done. The patient final diagnosis is Lyme and Bartonella with uh, recent mold exposure, which are in remission, and PANDAS disease triggered by environmental exposure, treated with IV therapy and surgery. Now, what is the conventional approach for patients with PANDAS? Well, it, I'm gonna break it down in four, is, uh, and I'm gonna skip the fifth because I'll tell you what it is. Tonsillectomy is one of the things that you wanna do if the patient has the criteria that meets up to that uh, problem where you want to make sure that you want to take out a part of the problem. Sometimes, interestingly enough, in other patients that have no tonsils and they have pandas, they do have swollen uh, glands and swollen lymph nodes. So there are other areas where the bacteria can be encapsulated and produce molecular mimicry that will produce the autoimmunity and produce the symptoms in the patient. So it's not always encapsulated in the tonsils, but it's a good place to start if they're swollen. IV antimicrobial therapy is very important because without it, we're not fighting off the infection and uh, the immune system is fighting off itself because of the infection, because it's recognizing the uh, human tissue as part of the problem when the infection is the real problem. So we need to use antimicrobial therapy. Plasmapheresis is fantastic. That is one of the main things that we do for PANDAS patients. And the plasmapheresis is like cleaning the house before you refurnish it with IVIG because IVIG is the furniture that is going to re-educate the immune system that is corrupt. You want to do both plasmapheresis and IVIG together because it maximizes the effect Whereas if just doing one over the other will have a certain level of impact, but then you're gonna you're gonna have to go back to square one and kind of repeat the plasma freezes over and over, or repeat the IVIG over and over. And actually, that's part of the study that we're doing different than the others that have published because. In this case, we decided to go in a different direction because some patients, to be honest, cannot afford plasmapheresis or IVIG or their medical insurance doesn't cover it. And in those cases, we want to have some resources for the physicians that are out there just trying to do something for these cases that sometimes the minimal changes will have big impacts. In this case, we did immune modulation with mycophenolic acid rather than using rituximab because sometimes rituximab can cause a series of side effects that with mycophenolic acid we didn't see and we haven't seen with other cases also. And then there's also mitochondrial support with IV folates 
which did have an impact with neuron communication. And we actually are going to focus a lot of the parts of the study and the nutrition and mitochondrial support because it's important that we focus on this. As I said, some patients cannot do ongoing plasma paresis or IVIG and focusing on these little crevices and areas can actually have a big impact. We uh, also did neuropeptide therapy with this patient because we saw that it accelerated brain healing, especially after an insult of this magnitude with such heightened neuropsychiatric and motor problems. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you all for listening. I hope to be able to publish the findings soon and you can read about them. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Let us know if the information that we gave you today was useful or if it was too difficult to digest. Have a great weekend, everybody. Sorry, great week. Peace. Thank you.